Dear precious teens, okay, let us come back to our stable position. Okay. Sit upright. Your shoulders are open. Your arms relax alongside of your body. Just gently come back to your body. Come back to the body. Come back to the in-breath as it is. Come back to the out-breath as it is. Hello, in-breath. Hello, out-breath. Hello, body. I know you are there, healthy, strong, able to do many things. And I'm so grateful and happy. So stay with that space of quietness, gratitude, calmness. Our brothers and sisters will offer a chant. We will evoke the name of a great being called Avalokiteshvara. And her name literally means one who listens deeply to the cries of the world. We all need that deep listening, right? Deep listening. We have that capacity in us as well. So when we evoke this great being, this great capacity, it's really helping us to come back to ourselves and touch that great capacity in us. And we practice listening to the difficulties in us, in our body, in our thoughts, in our feelings. And we send love, tenderness, compassion, understanding to the struggles, to the heaviness in us. And then as we feel that deeply in us, we also send that energy of listening, of understanding, of caring to those around us. There are over 160 teens right here. It's a very special time. And we all go through very similar experiences. If we have a chance to listen to each other, we we'll see that we are closer to each other than we can ever imagine. We have very similar human experiences. So we also send outward this love and understanding, this connection to one another. Okay. And then as we feel that deep connection right here and right now with one another, we also send the energy even further outward to our parents who may also have problems, relatives, siblings, friends who cannot be here, people in this country, people in other countries. We all have these human experiences that we may feel very cut off, isolated, lonely, but if our hearts are open, see that we really share these experiences together. So while brothers and sisters chant, you can maintain this energy. Just come back to your breath, relax your body, and just intentionally send that deep listening, loving speech, that love to yourselves, to each other, and to others in the world, okay? You can join your palms if you wish, or you can just simply relax your body. You can close your eyes, but do see if you can stay with your breathing. Because when you stay with your breathing, your mind is here and now. And you can receive the love and healing for yourselves, and you can also support each other with that love and that healing. Okay? So... Just continue to come back to your breath as some teens are coming in. Please find your space up here as well, some of you, and sit down.
Come back to your breath, to your body. We'll begin with three sounds of the bell and then a monastic. Oh, you don't read. Okay. And then we'll begin with the chant. You feel the need to stir or something, just breathe and smile and relax your body. You don't need to look at anybody. All you need is to look within. Okay, look inward. We know you're here and we're very happy. You mean a lot to us.
Continue to keep yourself quiet and calm. Allow this energy of love and healing be absorbed and retained in every cell of your body to help you care for yourselves now and for time to come. Okay. So let us sit up stably, beautifully. We will listen to three sounds of the bell. Stay with your in-breath and your out-breath as it is flowing in and flowing out. Breathe, smile, and relax your body. Relax your thoughts and feelings that are rising. Precious teens, I know you're here and I'm very happy. How many of you um, are amazed by yourself, but that you can stay quiet this long? Raise your hands. Yeah, it's amazing huh, that you can stay quiet. Yeah, what about still in your body? Like to sit this still for the last 15 minutes. How many of you? Yeah. It's rare, right? Okay. That's why we are here. And I'm really happy that you chose to come. How many of you chose to come here? Raise your hands. Oh, many of you. Huh? How many of you were forced to come? Oh, I see some. I think there are more, but you don't want to raise your hands, right? Okay, that's fine. You know, there was a dentist who wanted his girls to come here so much. This was a few years ago. And he was willing to put, you know, like, to inject them. Um, you know, it's like a, sed uh, a sedation to, sed to sedate them so that he could get them on the airplanes and get them here. He was that desperate because he felt like he couldn't really, you know, persuade his children to come here. He felt that this place could help his children. But anyway, they came awake and alert. So I'm really glad that you are here. Uh, how many of you remember what's the theme of this retreat? Can you raise your hands? What's the theme of this retreat? Be a real human. Okay, that's an interesting theme, right? Okay, so what does it mean to you to be a real human being? Raise your hands. I'll get a few answers. Okay, from far away. Loud gong. Know your mistakes and work on them? Yes. Okay, wow. Know your mistakes and work on them. Okay, what else? Know your mistakes. Well, what does it mean to you to be a real human being? Jess? Be authentic. Be authentic. Okay. What 
What else? Yes, God. Be in the present moment. Is that Albert? Wow, you have grown, God. Be. I didn't kill them before or anything, you know. <laughs> Be present. Okay? Who else? Yes, God. Oh, okay. Don't just make a mistake. Accept that you make a mistake and work on it. Right? Perfect. Okay, who else? Uh. To have emotions? To have? Emotions. To have emotions. What about you? Take risks. Take risks. Okay. Have emotions. You are so deep and take risks. Do you think cyborgs can do this? Can do these things? Do you think humanoid robots, they know their mistakes, they take risks, they have emotions, they are authentic, they are present? Huh? No. What do you think? What do you think? How, how are they different from us human beings? They don't have emotions. Okay, what else? What's the difference? What's another difference? Yes. They are? Louder, come. They are inanimate. Oh, I don't know. Yes. Did you say inanimate? It's such a big word. I just make sure that I heard it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. They are inanimate. Well, I saw a video. They interview this AI, artificial intelligence, and say, do you think you have consciousness? And it said, she said, I do. And then they said, how do you know you have consciousness? And she said, well, it's hard to say, but I am aware of myself I'm aware of my surrounding. That's scary. <laughs> huh? That's actually our definition of mindfulness. You know that? To have awareness of ourselves, to, be, to have awareness of our surrounding. So now, these robots start to say they have awareness of themselves. They have awareness of their surroundings. So this is really a time for us, especially at your age, to really evaluate what makes you human. These characteristics, these values, these important qualities of human beings so that we can, first of all, know them, nurture them, take good care of them, because to be a human being, a real human being, versus to just simply be a human, we can merge into being a cyborg or to being an artificial intelligence before we know it. You've heard of Elon Musk, right? Elon, Elon Musk? Oh my God. So I listened to an interview and he said this. He said, you know, you're all dependent on your iPhones, of your electronic gadgets. You are already a cyborg. You just don't realize it yet. I think he has a lot of, he's speaking some truth to that, right? So, okay. It's amazing that you brought out these characteristics as human beings to know your mistakes. Okay? So, I want to share with you a very deep teaching taught by the Buddha. As soon as the Buddha became enlightened, 
he went out to look for some friends to form a community. And he taught them the very first lesson. Who know? Who know what, what teaching the Buddha um, propagate, propagated? The very first teaching. Who knew? What was it about that, that he taught? Yes, Kong. Wow, the four noble truths. Yes, he taught about the four noble truths. I knew a young sister, her Vietnamese name, translated into English, is noble truths. But because she was still learning English, she couldn't pronounce, pronounce it very clearly. So somebody would ask, what's your name? She said, I'm Sister Noble Tooth. <laughs> okay. So, I'm Sister Noble Tooth. So I tried to help her to tell the difference between the tooth and the truth, but it was very difficult for her. And then when she realized what she was saying, she kind of liked the Noble Tooth. So she kept telling people that she's sister noble truth noble truth okay the four noble truths the first noble truth what is it about anybody can guess anybody yes go oh suffering exists have you heard this before suffering exists okay so there is There is suffering. Okay. So as young people, do you actually use the term suffering? What other terms do you use to describe suffering or ill-being or, or unsatisfactoriness that the Buddha used? But what is the modern term for suffering? Some of you, what do you use when you have suffering? What do you call it? You can? Okay, give me a few terms. Nana? Huh? I'm feeling sad. Okay, what else? Anybody? What do you... What's the term you use for suffering? Stress. Okay, stress is definitely a suffering. Good. Pain? Pain. Yes, that's suffering for sure. Fear and anxiety. Okay. Anything else? Depression. Depression. That's right. Huh? It's very prevalent. This suffering is very prevalent. Anybody else wants to add? Okay, teens, try to not talk to each other. Okay? Let us all work together. Okay? We cooperate. If you find it's very difficult to concentrate because your good friends are near, you can move to another place. Sounds good? I give you two seconds to do that. Anybody wants to move? Okay, if you don't move, but if you talk, Sister Day will make you do something funny. <laughs> so you want to move? You can? Why don't you move over here? Just... It will help yourself and it will help others. Thank you, God. I'm proud of you. Okay, sit there. Excellent. Anybody, anybody else over here? Nobody else? Okay, good. So we got some modern terms for suffering. What the Buddha called was suffering or disease. Are you all aware of these feelings? Depression, anxiety, stress? Yeah? pain, you all experience it, that sounds human, right? So there are, this is important that we acknowledge there is suffering. The Buddha taught that 2,600 years ago. And to me, this is an antidote to a phenomenon that takes place in society, in our society. You know what it is? It's denial. It's escaping, right? You've heard of it? 
like young people use the word escape a lot. Do you? Yeah, I do this to escape stress, to escape my depression, to escape stre- stress from work, this and that, right? So to be able to say, wow, there is sadness in me, there's depression, there's anxiety, there's fear. That is the first noble truth, okay? To be able to acknowledge that to, se- to ourselves and to each other, that's great power. Did you ever think of that? Instead of escaping it, instead of denying it, we say, there is such a thing existing in me, in my family, in my friends, in my society. And it's a strength. It's not a weakness. Do you know what the word de- denial, they make a, an acronym out of it. You know what it is? Denial. D E N I A L. Denial. Don't even know I am lying. Okay? Don't even know I'm lying to myself. Yeah? Don't even know I'm lying to my loved ones, to others. So when people said, are you depressed? No, I'm not depressed. I'm fine. Are you angry? No. Are you drunk? No way. That's called denial. Don't even know I'm lying. Okay? So just know that the Buddha taught it's really okay to have suffering. And it's actually essential, important, critical to acknowledge that there's suffering. Yeah? That's a power that we have that maybe robots don't have. I am suffering. Breathing in, I am aware that there's tension in my body. Breathing out, I smile and embrace and relax the tension in my body. Yeah? Or breathing in, I acknowledge, I recognize that there's pain in my body or there's pain in my feelings, there's pain in my thoughts. And breathing out, I embrace you. I'm here for you. I listen to you. I have that capacity of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, I can listen and embrace my thoughts and feelings and the pain in them. Okay? Let us enjoy one side of the bell and practice just that. Acknowledging suffering, breathing with suffering, embracing suffering. <coughs> to the second noble truth. Who would like to guess what is the second noble truth that the Buddha taught? Anybody? Raise your hands. Yes, Ka? Uh, I think it's like happiness is a, cho- is a choice. Not bad. Okay, happiness is a choice. Okay, that will go into that on the third one. Okay, good. What's the second one? If there's suffering, then what's behind the suffering? Can you guess? Desire, okay? So there's a cause, right? Desire, wow. You're deep. You see it in yourself? We'll talk about it, okay? What is the big term for If there's suffering, the second noble truth is that there are causes to the suffering. They don't come out of nowhere. You know that? Nothing comes out of nowhere. This is because that is, which brings me to this wonderful Dharma model. 
is a bean, this tiny one. A real bean, you can grow them, you can. And Brother B, in your campsite, he made me this model on voluntarily. So you can see from far away, half of the bean is black and half of the bean is white. On the black, there's a white dot. On the white, there's a black dot. They call this a yin-yang bean. Okay? It demonstrates, it illustrates a very deep teaching taught by the Buddha. It's called inter-being. Okay? So we say, you know, I exist all by myself. I am who I am. You know, that's just the way I am. But the Buddha said, I beg to differ. You are because your parents are. You are a certain way because your society is a certain way. Okay? In you, they are your parents, your education, many influences in you. You see? So in you, there are innumerable factors. You are because all of these conditions are. Your happiness is because of the happiness that is in your parents, in your family, in society. But suffering, there is suffering. And there are causes in that suffering. There are causes, okay? So we was talked about desire as a cause of suffering. What kind of desire, Gong? Would you like to specify some? Greed, wanting things. That's, okay, that's deep, Gong. Anything else? Yep. People want money and power. Misunderstanding, absolutely, that's a cause of suffering. Anything else? Some people like, like they just want to be loved. They want to be loved, but they look for love in the wrong places, right? Yeah. yeah, they look for love in the wrong places. That is the deep cause of suffering. Anything else? You are very enlightened. I wish you keep this, this mind, this enlightened mind, throughout your life it would really help you to avoid a lot of suffering. Okay? One more gun. causes of suffering. Yes. Wanting to feel happy. Wow, that can also be a cause of suffering. Yes. So enlightened. Wanting things to be different from the way they are. All this wanting, right? Wishing. But actually, they cause us suffering. That's amazing. You realize that, huh? In a society, when we consume a lot, we call compulsory consumption, right? We consume, we want, we want, because we think if we get those things, we'll be happy. But you, teens, you say, desire, wanting, this and that, things to be different, actually are causes of suffering. You realize that? Do you agree? The rest of the teens, you agree? You see that in yourselves? Okay, so let's look at that. So causes of suffering, that's the second noble truth, okay? Causes of suffering. We know this is because that is. This is not because that is not. Things don't just come out of nowhere, okay? Causes. The Buddha also used another term. Instead of using you know, a causal effect, a cause, Buddha used also a food. Okay? Food, nutriments that feed our suffering. So, for example, if you have depression, what do you feed yourselves that actually make your depression grow day by day? Some of the things you feed yourself that make you more depressed. You raise your hands. Yes, Gong, back there.
One more time. Ignoring other people. Ah, do you do that? When you're depressed, you kind of ignore your parents, your siblings, you avoid them, you push them away. That's definitely a food for your depression. Yes. Self-doubt. That definitely feeds your depression, your anxiety too, right? Thinking about negative things. Thinking about negative things. Wow, that's a strong food. Yes, Gong? Uh, negative, negative self-talk. See how aware you are? But you still do it, right? <laughs> Yes, Gang. Disappointment towards ourselves, towards yourself, and and others too. Disappointment. Okay. So all these. Yes, Gang. Uh, giving up on yourself. Oh, giving up on yourself. Okay. Yep. I know what you're talking about. Trying to escape it. So you see. Collectively, we really know. We really know that there is suffering. There's no way to deny it. There's no way to escape it. The best way is to face it. Because it's there. And it's very frightening when we try to suppress it or escape it. But in my life experience, I found out when I, I was not as enlightened as you right now, at such an early age, I came to the practice when I was already 30 years old. That's when I found there is suffering and it's okay to acknowledge. Don't try to escape it. Don't try to suppress it. Don't try to deny it. Hmm? And then to learn to recognize the causes, the food that I have fed myself all these years to make my depression so big, you know? I have uh, my best friend here from medical school. I met her on the very first day. The School of Medicine organized a gathering for us to get to know each other. And we were standing in you know, small groups, having small talks. And I overheard from the next circle, this young woman, she said, Oh, I just got here today. All my stuff is still in the car. I heard that, and I actually went to her, tapped on her shoulder, and I said, I overheard you say that. You know, my apartment, my roommate is away for three weeks. You can come and stay with me, so you can find your apartment. I said that to her, and then, you know, the next day she came to look at the apartment. We just talked and talked for two hours at least, and you know what? We have been best friends since. That's 30 years. 30 years. But my friend, she reminded me, as we have been hanging out the last few days, she said, you know, Sister D, there were times when you cried so hard. I heard it from the next room because we also became, you know, neighbors. Next door. I heard you cry so hard. It broke my heart. But I didn't know how to help you. She said that, you know. In medical school, as we were listening to the lectures, my headaches, I had such severe um, headaches. We call migraine headaches. She had to massage my head a lot of time. There were times when I couldn't hear a thing that the professor was talking about because she was like massaging my head and my ears. Like I couldn't hear anything. But she was really there to help me, you know, the years that we were in medical school. So we have that. But you know, I never say, oh, I have suffering. And there are causes that I actually have perpetuated through negative thoughts, yeah? through self-doubt, yeah? through the pressure, the disappointment that I, that I put on myself, just I didn't allow myself to rest. I studied too hard. Yeah? And I never really thank myself for all the, the efforts I made. 
So I really hope that by being here, first of all, you reach out for each other, okay? Just like I just made an effort to reach out for this stranger, and she's been my best friend for the last 30 years. So reach out. If you see somebody sitting alone, hmm? somebody looks like that person may feel out of place, somebody may look different from you, my friend and I, we look very different from each other. We are very different from each other. I came one month before medical school started to find the, 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 the apartment to get to know the campus. She came the very day that we were going to start. See, But we saw the common ground, the commonality deep inside. So don't let the skin color, don't let the different culture, don't let the different styles that you may, you know, may look outwardly, don't let, let that prevent you from making friends, from reaching out to help each other to be a support to each other, okay? okay. Let us enjoy one sound of the bell. And let the sound of the bell be your friend, be a very good friend who's there. Your phone, ev I'm sure every one of you, you have a phone, or most of you. I don't have one. You know, but you can use the sounds of the phone from a person next to you. You can use the telephone ring, you know, from your own or the siren or the church bells. Any kind of sounds that may cause you distress, use that as a bell of mindfulness so that you come back to pay attention to your in-breath as it is, out-breath as it is. This morning, my sister used the word to befriend. Befriend your in-breath. Befriend your out-breath. Okay? And by befriending your breathing, actually your mind comes back to your breath, to your body. And your mind calms down. It can stop generating self-doubt, you know, self-disappointments, pressure, yeah? all these negative thoughts and speech that can damage us further. There's no need for that. Just come back to the breath, come back to the body, and simply say, there's difficulty in me. And I'm here for myself. I'm here for my breathing. And I'm, I'm embracing what's arising. I'm here for you and I love you so help me to take better care of you my dear thank you for all the efforts you make even though it wasn't easy to come here it's not easy to be amongst all these teens who are strangers the monks and the nuns all these adults it's not easy to be surrounded by all these people and yet I'm here and I'm still here thank you so you learn to acknowledge yourselves what's going on, you acknowledge your efforts. You feed yourself with positive nutriment. Yeah. One of the things that you did not call out, but I think is a major cause of suffering, is this. Yeah? Yeah, you are nodding your heads, yes. As a society, we have become very dependent on electronic gadgets. Actually, we are very addicted to our iPhones, yeah, to social media, to movies, games. You know that as teenagers, your body is 
going through massive changes. Yeah? The hormonal levels fluctuate and change. I mean, just the testosterone, the le levels. Right now, it's 33 times, 32 times more than when you were like 11 or 12 years old. Okay? It's that. And in your brain, there's this major work. Whatever skills, knowledge, that you don't use, they get trimmed off. Trim off. Those neural pathways, those neural networks get trimmed off. Whatever that you rehearse, you use frequently, those networks, you know, were, are established and so they are strengthened. Okay? They are strengthened. So, if you use electronic gadgets, you play games, you're on social media, you are so focused like this. You are developing those neural networks, right? You're rehearsing them, you're strengthening them. They have become freeways in your brain. Freeways. And there are so many of those freeways that are being strengthened right now. If we don't play sports, let's say you like to play football before or basketball, you like to run, to swim, to play the guitar, to play the piano, those things, if you learned when you were children and now you don't use them, what will happen to them? Yeah, they get trimmed off. Yeah? It's like a path. If you don't use, then it fades, right? It becomes a trail, uh, an overgrown trail, right? So, when we look at the causes of suffering, we think of them as food, but also as a path. And it's very scientific, the path, the neural pathways, yeah? The neural networks, literally, these feed our suffering. So, you are teenagers, but if you have this awareness, you can stop and ask yourselves often. Like this morning, we listened to the discourse on youth and happiness, right? And the goddess asked the monk, why do you uh, let go of the pleasure of the present moment to pursue the pleasure of a distant future? And this young monk, he said, no, I don't. I actually let go of these, these, these pleasures, these desires that, cause, that bring very little happiness, but a lot of discomfort and suffering later. You remember the, the sutra this morning that you heard? Yeah? Can you be that goddess? Can you be that god who asks yourself those questions? What am I doing? Am I feeding myself in a wholesome, beneficial way? Or am I feeding my anxiety by pushing people away, by isolating myself, by you know, being on my you know, computer all this time? How does it make me feel? Am I happier or am I more tired? You see? So be that goddess, that god, that person who asked the questions, uh, asked those questions, be courageous. Because when you raise those questions, then suddenly those things that draw you in lose a little power because you have doubt on those things. You know, there's suffering. All of us who did, we are, and we will experience discomfort, this ease and suffering. That's what the Buddha is teaching us. As human beings, we make mistakes. We have strong emotions. Yeah? We have difficulties. We cannot avoid them. 
That makes us actually real human beings. But if we avoid them, we try to escape them, actually we cause more suffering to ourselves. We lie to ourselves. We don't face what is until it accumulates more. So suffering to me, it has its cause. Like your body, you can get sick. You are young like this, but you can already have you can already have diagnosis, right? How many of you have asthma? Raise your hands. Yeah, see? Some of you have asthma. That's a difficulty of the body, right? How many of you have a chronic condition? Raise your hands, girl. It's really okay, yeah, to have a chronic condition, like we have diabetes, we may even have high, high blood pressure already, right? Have a chronic pain, all of that. It's really okay to have those things because that's the nature of our body. If we have difficult feelings, that is totally okay. But what we can go one step beyond is to acknowledge that there are causes. And you know what? And to know that we are not victims only. If something happens, like an accident or an abuse, physical, verbal, or sexual, yeah, and we experience that trauma, that is the first arrow. Something we cannot avoid, especially when we're children, when we're young, we cannot protect ourselves. But the second arrow the Buddha taught, you know, imagine an arrow shot into your arm. It's very painful. But if you shoot the second arrow into this wound, what do you think the pain would become? Not just double. It becomes exponential. Very, very painful. So, when we are not aware, we will try to escape. That's actually the second arrow. We try to numb ourselves with drugs, yeah? drug use, alcohol use, we play games, yeah? we get lost in social media, we get lost in unhealthy relationships. Yeah? All of those things are actually the second arrow, the third arrow, the fourth arrow. Does it make sense to you? So, say, so breathing in, I am, I'm aware that there's the first arrow. Can I just take care of this wound by my mindful breathing, relaxing, giving my temp, time more space and time to care for it? Get help from your parents. Get help from your teachers, from somebody you trust. Talk about it. Okay? Share about it. Can you help me? Can you help me stop this abuse? Can you help me embrace my strong emotions, my suffering? You see? So that we don't have the second arrow, the third arrow, so that we don't rehearse it and make it become like a negative coping mechanism. Does it make sense? Like we run or we fight, yeah, or we check out, and then it becomes a habit to run to fight all the time or to check out all the time. And it becomes a personality. Yeah? We're always anxious, we're always depressed, we're always avoiding you know, others, avoiding interactions with human beings, and we just become more and more isolated, more and more anxious and depressed. You see? So those are actually caused further by us. In the victim, there's actually the perpetrator. That's the teaching on interbeing. The depression is because of the food that we feed, hmm? because of the pathways, the neural pathways, the neural networks that we rehearse, that we strengthen. So when we see it like that, we are empowered to be more proactive. You see, to choose a better path which is the third one. But let us enjoy one side of the bell before we go into the third noble truth. Okay, sit up beautifully, Gang. Karuna. Sit up stably. Okay. When you sit up stably, 
like this. You know what? Your mind also straightens up. So when you feel bad, don't just lounge on the bed or on the couch. Just put all your electronics away, best out of your room, so that it does, they don't tempt you, okay? But just sit up like this, come back to your breath, come back to your body, speak lovingly to yourselves, and your mind straightens up. Your feelings will relax and will calm down. A very simple practice. You take care of your body, you're actually taking care of your thoughts and your feelings. Come back to the in-breath. Come back to the out-breath. thank myself, the efforts that I make, however big or small, many times a day I thank myself. Many times a day I say, I'm here for you. Help me to take better care of you. I love you. I hope that you also learn to do that for yourself. Okay? The third noble truth our friend already said, is that there's happiness, okay? So we look at this model again of what you call this teaching on? Yes, yin yang being with the teaching on interbeing. Interbeing. This is in that, and that is in this, okay? Yeah? So when there is suffering, but in suffering, there's also a seed of happiness. You see? In happiness, there's also a seed of suffering that we need to be aware of. Yeah? Like, for example, you can feel really good eating you know, ice cream, a bowl of ice cream. Oh, I'm so happy, right? But what do you get afterwards if you eat a big bowl of ice cream? You get stomach ache? Yeah? You feel sick. I feel sick. But you know what? I used to eat ice cream. I used to eat very rich food. And I felt bad afterwards. But I never made the connection. Or even if I made the connection, I just didn't change my behavior. So strange. But now, I become more and more aware of my body, how I feel before... I eat something or I consume something with my eyes, my ears, yeah, conversations, music, what I watch with my eyes, or what I smell, what I put in my mouth, how I hold my body, what I think about myself. I'm aware how I feel before, during the time I'm doing that, and afterwards how I feel. You pay attention. And then you start to make the connection. This makes me feel sick afterwards or even sometimes during the time you're doing it. And you know what? The wisdom inside you will say, then why do you do that? Let's not do that, right? So, but we first have to raise that awareness. Put two and two together first, okay? So, in suffering, actually there is happiness as well. There, so there's not just suffering in the world. There's not just suffering in ourselves. Because there's also happiness. And this happiness the Buddha talked about is a deeper happiness, just the, not the happiness from eating ice cream 
I'm feeling sick afterwards, okay? Or playing video games for a few hours, and then you feel like sick afterwards. Can you tell me some of the, the causes, the food, the path that bring about deeper, truer happiness for yourselves? Can you raise your hands? Yes, Ka? Wow, helping other people brings you happiness. Wonderful, Ka. Anything else? Yes. Again, Ka? Good. Okay. So you have tasks, you have chores, you have responsibilities, and you actually do them. And that gives you happiness, right? Okay, you accomplish them. You have enough self-discipline, right? You do what you need to do. Good. Anything else? Yes. Finding time for yourself. Wonderful. Can you do that? That's amazing. Okay. Making time for yourself. Okay. Anything else? What makes you happy and at peace with yourself? Anybody here? Okay, come, go ahead. Exercise, Exercise makes you happy. Awesome. <laughs> Self care. Like what? Huh? One example. Concrete. Eating healthy. Okay, eating healthy, exercising, doing what you need to do. Good. Those are the reasons for happiness, right? Good. Somebody told me how to bring a balance. Sister D, can you talk about how to bring a balance between happiness and suffering? Yeah? Because in our family, maybe a parent is sick, and we are very worried, that's suffering, right? Or our parents aren't getting along well, that's definitely a burden on the young people. Yeah? But we need to remember to balance that, to remember that there's happiness too, okay? To self-care, to come back and say, wow, I am young at this moment. However old you are, 13, 15, 17, 18, believe it or not, you are right at this moment most beautiful, most handsome, yeah? most strong. You are youngest right now compared to the rest of your life. Right? Many of us at this age, we wish, oh, I wish, you know, I turn 18, I become independent. I get out of my parents' house. You wish that, many. But you know what? Actually learn to enjoy your youth, your good health, yeah? your freedom from, many responsi from adult responsibilities. Those are actually sources of happiness. Yeah? So when we give rise to the awareness of the conditions that we are having, you know, conditions of happiness, happiness, and we're grateful for them. I'm still young and healthy. I'm so grateful. You feel happy right away. You see? Oh, I'm, I still have a mother. I'm happy. You know, I lost my mother when I was 12 years old. And I never knew my father. Yeah? That was difficult. But many of you, you still have a mother. Many of you actually have both parents. Don't take them for granted. Although they are, you know, they are fallible, they make mistakes, right? They have their weaknesses, but they're still around to help you out, to take care of you. So pay attention to them. You know, say, Mom, I know you're still here with me, and I'm really grateful. Dad, I know you're struggling, but thank you for sticking around with me. 
you know, being there for me, seeing me every so often. So when we are grateful, we can be happy. But if we have good conditions and we don't acknowledge them, then we take them for granted and we feel very poor. You see? I have even learned to be grateful not only for the good things that happened to me, but also for the bad things that took place in my life. I was never grateful for those bad things before. But as I practice, I actually am grateful for the things that didn't happen for me and also the bad things because they helped me to practice with, to have much to practice with and to be more empathetic, understanding and grateful first and foremost toward myself but also towards others. You see, one day I was walking and a thought arose. I'm so grateful my mother didn't abort me. It came like that. She was in a very difficult situation. It would be very difficult for her to bring me to the world and take care of me. But she actually kept me. And I never, I was never grateful for that fact. But one day, it just came to me and my heart was filled with gratitude for my mother, for bringing me to this world, for doing her best to take care of me until she died. Yeah? So there are many things to be grateful for. Yeah? And that brings us happiness. That helps us to balance the suffering that we experience as human beings. Yeah? Make sure don't bring more suffering than necessary. Things just naturally arise. The compost will, you know, will be there. We don't have to cause more suffering. We don't have to have the second, the third, the fourth arrow. But we can take care of the first arrow. And that actually brings happiness. For me, my happiness now, they're not, it's not the things that I get that I want, that I desire anymore. But my happiness comes from being able to take care of my sadness, of my suffering, of the sadness and suffering that my mother experienced, that my ancestors experienced. You know, it actually, it makes me happy that I can take care of them through me and in me. See? So let us Breathe with the sound of the bell. briefly into the fourth noble truth is if there is happiness then there is a way to happiness okay there are also causes and conditions food that feed our happiness that we talked about yeah the pathway if we rehearse certain neural networks certain neural pathways like feeling grateful, acknowledging the conditions, you know, the positive conditions that are still there for us. Wow, today is a wonderful day. Not too hot, not too cold. Well, I'm really glad. See, it's there. But if we're not aware, we're not happy. But the moment you give rise to that recognition, you're like, I'm glad. Because in Arizona, where my brother lives right now, it's 118 degrees. 
and he has to work in a garage. And it's very, very hot. And he said even when he put the fan on, it's like spitting fire. Yeah. But here it's probably in the 80s max, right? So we can be grateful. We can be happy. There's so many reasons for that. There's a Chinese word, uh, character for the path. I don't know if you can see it this far away. This character right here is, stands for the head. Okay. And this one right here, it goes for the feet walk slowly. Okay. The feet that walk. This whole thing, path. path. You see how your feet go first. Carry your head and you walk slowly. Okay? That's the path. We were talking about cyborgs, right? We were talking about humanoid robots, AI. It's very impressive. I, you know, they have like a hundred and some billion parameters. It's all of this information, all these chips put in their brain. And it's modeled after a human brain, actually. So a robot, an AI, can know so much that we as humans cannot ever learn that much. Very few of us. It can be very intimidating. Yeah? Are you impressed by AI? Yeah. They even said that they can come up with a device to implant into mm -hmm. our brain so that we can, you know, absorb information, take in information much more faster and more than an ordinary human being can. And they even said that maybe the older generations may not, most people won't choose that, but young people may choose that. There is a time, there will be a time that you will have to choose that. Do I want to remain a real human being? Or do I choose to be half human, half robot, so I can be smarter. Yeah? Choose now. Choose every day. In my experience, I went to school for 24 years. Medical, med, middle school, high school, college, medical school residency training, 24 years. I must admit that I don't retain even 1% of what I learned. And I certainly don't apply even that 1% in my daily life. Knowledge, information, that's what AI they have over us. But knowledge and information, that's not real life experience. It's not wisdom. It's, not, it's certainly not love, not human connection. You see? I hope you know that for yourselves and make that choice. Do I want to remain a human being? Do I want to be a real human being? To recognize my mistakes and then to take care of them. To transform these neural networks that are not so beneficial. You know, to actually learn to transform my addiction, whatever that is. Drugs, alcohol, you know, Pornography, uh, 
different ways that I escape. I'm still young enough to change those neural networks much more easily than a person who is in their 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s even. Relationships. Just really want you to know Try not to get into a habit of having sexual relation, feeling the pressure to have a sexual relation with somebody after your first date or something. There's a real pressure. Something wrong with you, you know, you're an aberration, you're an anomaly. Something wrong with you if you don't have sex with somebody you have gone out once or twice. But In my experience, and also through just listening to many, many people, you know, when we go into that, we really, we we make a mistake. We We are confused between a physical intimacy and a deeper love, deeper connection that will take more time, more energy, more investment, to really get to know ourselves and to know each other. See? To like go slowly with our feet first and not jump into. You have you seen people who walk like this? Their heads go first. You know? Their feet are behind them and their heads they go like this. It's like they cannot walk fast enough. Don't get caught in this head, you know? information, knowledge, and get uh, caught by that. Or by just social pressure, by intellectual uh, acrobats. But like really come back and be in the body. Live deeply, feet first. I see that on an advertisement for shoes, you know? Like live fully, something, feet first. Well, there's some wisdom in that. Walk your feet first. Walk slowly. Take, you know, take time and space to get to know yourselves. To be your own soulmate. Huh? I mean, to walk the path. Take time. Because whatever that we rehearse, it will become a habit. If you have a sexual relation immediately, then subsequent relationships, you just right, jump right into it. And then you're like, oh, actually, I don't know anything about this person. I don't really get along with this person. But now I already have this very intimate sharing with this person. So you feel trapped. You see? You feel trapped. And the body, the body really keeps the score. Everything we experience, it keeps the score it will surface again and again through our thought, speech, and bodily actions. Through the sickness that we have later on in our life, through the sadness, the agitation, the anxiety, you know, everything is kept in our body, in our mind. Nothing is ever lost. So in that way, to know, you know, a way to care for ourselves, I hope my brother will go more into the, the A4 Noble Path or a little bit more. But to have, to cultivate what you are learning from here, mindfulness, to be aware of these truths right in your body, right in your mind. Yeah? And to learn to care for yourself with right thinking, right view about interbeing, to use loving speech, Loving actions towards yourself instead of harming, you know, cutting, harming the body. Just embrace yourself. Help me to not hurt myself anymore. I don't want this for myself. I don't want this for my family, for my children in the future. Help me to find another way. I know there is another way. There is a way out that I can take care of myself and to diligently cultivate the positive neural pathways, the positive neural networks, you see? So that we can 
be on this positive path. Huh? Last thing I want to leave with you about this noble tooth. <laughs> One time I went to the dentist and I had this toothache for a long while, but I didn't have it, enough conditions to go see a dentist. When I finally went, it was too late. So she had to do a root canal on that tooth for me. It means, you know, to kill all the nerves. And then she filed that tooth down to, a, to the very small so that she can put a crown on top of it. And while the dentist went somewhere, I had a mirror, and I was looking at my tooth, this little stump right here. And I looked at it, and tears just streamed down when I saw that stump. I didn't take care of it. I didn't know how to take care of it for many years of my life. And so when I learned to take good care of it, it was, you know, it was already damaged a little bit. But now, just a stump, it will continue to serve me at least another 20 years if I know how to take care of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, your tooth. Even if it's so damaged, then they kill all the nerves and put a crown on it. It can serve another 20, 30 years. And that made me cry. Because I have 30 teeth. They are there to take care of me. I have all this whole body to take care of me. And reduced to a stump is still taking care of me. I just felt this tremendous gratitude for this stump. Yeah? Recognize that in you, God. Even as a stump, even something that is not perfect in you, it's still there for you to take good care of you. Yeah? So be a friend, be a soulmate. Get to know what you have, remember what you have, take good care of what you have inside you and around you. And you can be happy, my dear ones. Life doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah? But you are alive. And because you are alive, many things, everything is possible. So, learn to do that. And when bad thoughts arise, oh, I want to harm myself, I want to kill myself, I want to check out, I had all of that, and I rehearsed that neural pathway so many times in my life. I just want to disappear. But now I just learn to say, I'm so grateful for you. I love you. Help me to take better care of you. And slowly, those negative self-talk, self-doubt, self-denigration, self-sabotage, they don't take place in my mind anymore. Just slowly, slowly, they get trimmed off. They fade. And the new pathways become stronger. It's deep with gratitude mm. for what I have, what I had, what I still have, what I don't have anymore. I'm grateful for all of that. And I'm grateful that you are here that you allow yourselves to be exposed to the teachings, to the practices, so that you can better care for yourselves, for your families, and many, many in the future. Come. Thank you so much for being here. And I love you very much. We will listen to three sounds of the bell. Sit up beautifully, come. Okay, with your back upright. Come back to a stable posture. <laughs>